you know, sexism of patriarchy, gender uh, injustice, and, and it's reversible, be gender equality or justice, is only one aspect of um, a society that would, um, would be better than the one we live in today. So that the feminism that informs my politics is one that is very much intersectional and transnational. In, in other words, I, there cannot be a society that is um, committed to gender equality where racism and economic disparities will prevail. It, it's really about um, transforming the institutions, um, including our educational system, in a radical way that has the premise of equality and justice for all, um, but also recognizes that we're not on an equal playing field. Uh, so what type of reparation, affirmative action programs uh, you're going to have in place to get us to an equal playing field and how long it will take. Uh, so you, when you look at your classmates um, at this prestigious institution, uh, on paper you all have to, um, to work as hard to get an A as students. But no one takes into account how many of those students have parents who sign the tuition checks and they don't have to, um, to do anything in return except to be accountable to the parents, how many students have, or families have taken out huge loans for the students to be able to afford this education, how many students have jobs waiting for them um, upon graduation and how many students are worried about having to have to pay their clones. Um, so even when you get access to the best education, you're not starting from, playing, uh, from an equal playing field. If education were free, that would be an equalizer. And, and you know, we had, um, we had a presidential candidate that had a plan to to say, you know, every student who enters a college could could have access to education. Economically, it can be done. I mean, you would have to cut the military budget. That that society that I think about, you cannot have gender equality without looking at your economic priorities. If war continues to be a centerpiece of foreign policy that type of masculinity and logic of domination and solving existential problems with violence will continue to be valued and therefore propel male politicians to have the voice of authority when it comes to matters of national security and then get people to trust them. So, the media would be very different as well, since this is what the project is about. Uh, I think as a feminist, it's important for me to, to be critical of the way Kellyanne Conway is portrayed in the media. Finally, you know, the, the New York Times actually took notice of it. It's the same uh, framing as Hillary Clinton. Um, very sexist imagery, a focus on the, the exteriors, what they look like, rather than their politics. So definitely a reminder that we live in a very sexist society. This is also a society that where your privilege in terms of your position of power as a woman does not shield you from this type of sexist. Um, treatment. So I, I think it's important to be very 
critical and mindful of the trap of those empty slogans like the future is female or you know kind of we all believe in gender equality there um, centuries of institutionalized systemic racism, sexism, um, economic disparities, homophobia um, will take a long time to undo. And the only chance is if we expose them. And this is where education is extremely important. I don't trust the media in doing it because, unfortunately, the media has been reduced to soundbite, especially in the era where there's less and less print media and, you know, more and more um, tweets. So you cannot um, explain systemic oppression in 22 characters. Or you could try. Uh, but you cannot really get to, um, you cannot answer your question in, in 22 characters, but you can in um, college class, definitely in four years of college education, uh, share with students um, an, an analysis of multiple oppression as well as knowledge about movements that try to challenge a particular oppression or those who make connections between them. There's, there's a difference between a media generated by people who have been um, in positions of power and who are afraid that that power will be taken away from them. They will have to share it. And people that have been um, vulnerable and in, in uh, and disempowered and are reclaiming voice uh, through media, through sharing information with others. I mean, there's definitely a qualitative um, difference and I'm, I'm more interested in listening to voices that come from people who have been silenced and marginalized I think this is where the feminist movements come, this is how we got gender studies and ethnic studies on college campuses, of, you know, queer um, narratives, but, um, but I think understanding the systemic nature of some of those problems um, is where the problem is. It's, uh, the problem lies right now in producing media that does not simplify complex problems, um, but instead looks for clear ways to break down and translate what is complex. I think ultimately this is what a good teacher is supposed to do, then provide students that have the privilege of education with the language to be able to talk about the kind of complex um, existential problems that we are discussing now with the person at the grocery store or the person who works in the dining hall uh, rather than um, socialize students into a language that may appear, may sound like a foreign language to someone who hasn't had the privilege of prestigious education.